One of the biggest barriers to successfully shifting your reality is not fully understanding your story. And of course, many of you have experience with insight, with self-discovery and self-mastery and even reality shifting. And so you might think to yourself, I, I know my story. In fact, I had somebody recently tell me that. And that is one part of the puzzle to understand who are the players, who are the villains, who are the heroes, if you're still in binary cognition, and many of us still are, it's a process. It's a process to break out of those roles. So be patient with yourself if you are. And what are the events surrounding it? That is almost like the capsule of the story is what I want to say. It's the capsule. And you're looking inside the capsule at all of the pieces. And if it's like a time capsule, you could bury it in the ground and somebody could come along and they could dig it up and make a movie about your life and whatever your story is. That's not exactly what I mean when I say, what is your story? What I mean is, what is the prediction mechanism in your brain that creates stories? What is it on default? What is your default brain setting? Are you casting yourself in a repetitive series of stories? You could look at your life and you could see this trend. This is what we do in the shadow work coaching is that we piece apart are you always in victim consciousness? Are you always being betrayed? Is somebody always cheating on you? Is somebody always leaving you? Are you the one that's always leaving somebody? You know, like what are the themes of your life? What is the series of stories that construct the thread of continuity throughout your entire existence? And then what is your origin story and how does that tie into this repetitive remake of movies that becomes your life and these little time capsules that if we were to go out in a backyard, presuming that you have a backyard, we could go out to your backyard and we could dig up all of your time capsules we might see a constellation of an entire story that is like a Rubik's cube to understand. And once you understand your own personal Rubik's cube, then you're really on the path to freedom and liberation. Because what happens is, and this person that I referenced, they had convinced themselves that their interpretation of events in their life was related to a villain who happened to live quote unquote on top of them. I've been there. I've had a villain on top of me too. And I won't get into their details just, you know, to protect their privacy. But essentially things that didn't make sense they collapsed into this narrative and they collapsed into a story and they constructed this almost with like duct tape explanation that an outside observer and it was like in the nightmare realms and i see this a lot in the nightmare realms an outside observer listening to the story is kind of like hmm Hmm, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. And so when trying to help this person break away from their narrative construction and to see a different alternative explanation 
of which there are several actually, they were very rigid about holding on to their story, almost like a security blanket. This is normal. There's a process, people going through nightmare type of experiences. There's a perseveration process and there's this um, construction of a narrative that is not internally logically consistent and has many flaws actually when you start to really examine it. But because the brain is wired to need things to make sense and because the familiar is easier to digest than the unfamiliar, then there's a lot of cognitive biases and erroneous errors in judgment which occur in the creation of these stories. So this is really specific to those in nightmare situations. But I see this effect also when people are not in nightmares, but on the spectrum to a lesser degree. So what happens is that the familiar default gets wrapped up into this narrative creation and you're casting yourself in a role that then you're having to play out karmically and materialize like actually you materialize this world to play out this role so understanding what the bigger picture is and how your mind works is critically important to understand what samsara repetitive events you are creating and recreating in your life and very often there is an escalation if you start progressing through different stories without solving the lessons then the lessons will get progressively more intense or more challenging and more difficult and it's a way to help you awaken and to see beyond just the one frame and the one story in one little time capsule that we could bury in your backyard and so when you're immersed in a single story and if i were to ask you what is your story then it's almost like walking through a forest you know this cliche it's like you lose sight of the forest through the trees like the perspective it's normal right the perspective of if somebody says where are you your perspective walking through the trees versus being in a in a helicopter or being off to the side and flying a drone over the forest your orientation is going to be very very different and as a result your description of where are you is going to be different and this frame of reference is really an issue when it comes to actually reality shifting because what people do in my personal opinion is that they focus on and not you and i'm just saying that just the average person focuses on the things that they want and the way that life should be and they'll script out a reality without taking the time to understand the underlying patterning and all that glitters is not gold and so you can manifest pretty much anything that you want right but when you get there and it really starts to unfold how do you feel and are you signing up for another tour of duty or another round in a hell like existence and remember that hell doesn't often advertise itself right it actually tends to lure you in <laughs> and it's not like it it's got a sign that's like welcome to hell here's your twin flame or here's your love of your life it's gonna take you straight to hell you know like it, it you don't get that you have to sense it out 
And that doesn't mean that every beautiful golden opportunity that comes your way is going to lead you to hell. This is where the exercise of discernment comes in. It's very powerful spiritual practice and consciousness practice. And so if you're just focused on the material, if you're just focused on the things that you want, you can have that. I'm, I've made this mistake. <laughs> I made this list of this partner that I wanted. And uh, I received exactly what was on the list. And then I got to know them and realized that there were some key values that I didn't include that I should have included. Like, you know, like reciprocity and empathy and, you know, like reciprocity and wanting to care about my experience as much as I was caring about their experience. And they hit everything on the check mark, you know, like all the little boxes. And, but the experience of them and what unfolded was actually more of a nightmare. It became more of a nightmare. But of course, it didn't advertise itself that way. And at first, it was a very beautiful soul connection. So I don't want to devalue that connection because it actually was very meaningful and very special to me. But there was a lot of shadow work for both of us, actually. And we were a great complement for us to observe our own shadow. And it taught me a lot about self-respect and boundaries and assertiveness. Because if I didn't stand in my power and if I didn't assert myself, then I was being taken advantage of, which I didn't know that I was signing up for. So this is just the point. This is like, you can write down everything that you want and the universe is going to deliver that. But until you really get to the underlying pattern and the Rubik's cube of what you are creating, because this was another recapitulation of what I had created in the past, but it had a different flavor, a different person, a different setting, a different country. But like the capsule was actually still the same, you know, it was in the same constellation of the family and the contents inside of it changed and the story and the events and everything surrounding it changed, but it actually didn't really like when you look at it from the drone perspective or the helicopter perspective, it was just another version of what I had run from. And so I stopped running and I stood my ground and I confronted it head on, preemptively, quickly, swiftly, and took some heat because of that. Because the person that I was with was like, what, what are you talking about? You know, why are you da 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 da? And I was like, no, 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 this is not okay. This is not okay. And this isn't me. I don't want to go down this road. It's not me. This is not okay. Da, da, da. And by me asserting my boundaries and taking care of myself, it obviously dissolved the relationship, which was fantastic because what I had done previously was ignored it, denied it, gaslit myself and accepted things that I shouldn't have. And then that created this long trajectory of a very painful, horrific at times, frightening, terrifying experience that it didn't need to go all the way down the, the ramp, you know? It's like, if you see a plane, let's say that you're driving a plane and you're on the runway, right? And you notice that there's like an engine fire. There's a little bit of smoke. You don't really see the fire yet, right? What I used to do is I would take off anyway and I'd be like, ah, you know, it kind of smells like smoke. Hmm, I'm not so sure about that. And then, you know, there's people like that are trying to evacuate midair and I'm still 
flying the plane and the flight attendants are like throwing the luggage out and taking the parachutes and I'm the only one left except for me and this partner and the the engine that is going kaputs and I am steadfast because that's what I thought love was you know no and so obviously in situations like that the plane crashed and who's responsible for that well I can look at my decision making and I can say to myself hmm I think I want to do it differently next time well the universe doesn't just take you at your plan right it gives you these lessons on repeat until you can actually demonstrate this which is why it's so important to understand how you're actually constructing your life how you're actually constructing your reality and until you know that if you're just looking at the list of things if you're looking at your income if you're looking at the car that you want to buy if you're looking at the type of partner that you want if you're looking at where you want to travel then you're missing it right and you're wasting time I actually believe that you waste time so it's more efficient to do this personal work if you don't already and that's just it's actually way faster and when you do that now you're the pilot flying the plane and you start to smell smoke this is what I'm aware I'm at now and I'm like "Mm -mm, no F that I'm getting out of this plane it is on fire I don't need to see the fire I don't need to see the engine I don't need to crash I know it's I don't care if you're telling me it's not I know I I don't care if you're trying to gaslight me if you're trying to no 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 I'm jumping out I don't need your permission we're not talking about this anymore I'm getting the f out right and so then this creates a new reality because then you're breaking the pattern you're actually deciding to do something different and when you do that you clear the space because you're not wasting 5 8 15 20 50 years of your life in a plane that you should have jumped out of before it actually took off right and this is why being in touch with your intuition is so important because it tells you your body tells you your gut tells you your dreams tell you your guides tell you (laughs) your friends tell you your family tells you and you're like no 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 everybody's wrong no 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 i'm 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 damn it i'm flying this plane we're gonna get to our destination and then let's imagine that you do get there and the engine hasn't completely exploded and everything's just like falling apart let's imagine you do get there how do you get there and what psychological state do you get there what does it look like are you like bitter at the end bitter bitter you know like really bitter (laughs) some things you can never come back from and some flights especially those long-haul flights you better have the right co-captain co-pilot with you and the right crew and the right conditions and everything because you can't always come back from some of those journeys not not the same and not always better so by understanding how you create the narratives how you create the patterns in your life how you create the circumstances how you create reality in the past and in the present you can understand how you're creating it in the future and that's how you can gain confidence that when you start reality shifting that you're actually shifting into not just something shiny but something shiny and better that is an improvement and I've noticed a little bit of a delay and a lag time which raises some interesting questions about how the universe works but we don't have time for that tonight I've noticed a little bit of a delay in actually shifting to something new 
we'll talk about that another time. But for now, I am indeed a reality shifting coach and shadow work coach. If you would like help understanding your planes, how they crash, if they happen to crash repetitively, uh, yeah, if you need somebody in your um, air control <laughs> tower, then definitely send me an email and we can have a consultation. Sacred Journey Productions at gmail.com.